as far as somebody like me that's, that's a small operator, uh, if somebody, again, wants to keep it for a while and he wants to do it as cheaply as possible and he wants to get maybe a little back, back taxes and that kind of thing. So I, I see some advantages to it. The first families came to Evingston in the late 1870s, early 1880s, and uh, our family was one of the first three. I think there were two families here already when they came here, but my grand great-grandfather, William Drayton Evings, who the town's named for, came here from the Spartanburg, South Carolina, Anderson, South Carolina area, and he uh, bought a half section of land, which is 360 acres. My father was the youngest of three brothers, and he got the store in the post office. I think it was in 1931 or 32, or maybe 33. And he tried to farm a little with the land, but he didn't do a whole lot with it. And by the time I got grown up, uh, I was encouraged to go to the farm. I had two more brothers and a sister, and he had the store and the farm. And I went there, and I've enjoyed it all these years. Well, the property was first cleared for um, vegetable farming, and, and they tried peaches here, and they also some it was in our citrus, orange grove for a number of years. And for many years after I started farming, we continued with the vegetables, but uh, uh, probably in the 1960s, we started putting it in permanent pasture and, and putting cattle on it, and that's what's on it today. And as far as I know, that's what'll be on it from now on. Mr. Wood has been talking with a local land trust organization, Conservation Trust for Florida, to place a conservation easement on his land. In this case, CTF is partnering with both a county and federal agency, Alachua County Forever, and the Federal Natural Resource Conservation Service. They plan to purchase the development rights on the property. The land will be preserved as a mixture of ranching, some vegetable farming, and natural areas. To find out more about preserving rural land, we met up with David Carr, board member of the Conservation Trust for Florida. The Conservation Trust for Florida was uh, founded in, in 1999 uh, with the aim of, of protecting working rural lands. Uh, the state and the nature conservancy and the big, big boys all went after the, you know, the most pressing big things. And so, but we thought that there was a niche here for, uh, to, to um, a value and offering to the smaller landowners and landowners that don't have pristine lands. Conservation Trust for Florida is a, a, is a 501c3 not-for-profit organization, so the board works uh, is, is all volunteer. In addition to the board of directors, the organization has about 150 members that are just concerned citizens who live around here that, that either drive out have to drive past open space and want to see it protected or live in an apartment in town but want to be sure that they have this vicarious enjoyment of these spaces out in, uh, uh, out in the open. Where we live is about 172 acres and that's what we're working on right now. I have other properties but this, this uh, borders on Orange Lake. It's beautiful land. The wildlife is uh, extensive up there and I don't know, it, the family has been there all these years and I just, it seems like a nightmare to think of a subdivision being there to me. Just me, maybe I'm selfish, but I like the, maybe what do you call serenity of being able to go up there by yourself with nobody but the cows and the birds and, and, and you don't hear any cars or anything like that. Some people say y'all not love land, but I always did. It was always a part of me. Always a worry when we had it plowed up and had a big rain or a big wind and the sand would blow and such as that. All that we see back here is the property that you want to put the easement on. 
is that correct? That's correct. And uh, it, so it stretches from the road. And can you tell me a little bit more about this area over here? It's probably about uh, 15 or 20 acres of this that's never been cleared. Uh, my great-grandfather died before he got it all cleared, and my grandfather always wanted to clear it, my father wanted to clear it, and I thought about clearing it years ago. But now I want to leave it as it is. It's a shelter for the cattle in the winter to get out of the weather and to have calves. And it's also that some of the trees are beautiful back there. In fact, Mr. Wood's property serves as an important wildlife corridor that connects several significant natural areas in the region. This allows wildlife to travel across the landscape without coming across urban areas. In addition, the property borders a large lake, and many species use the lake and the shoreline for breeding and foraging. We were lucky to come across a large, soft-shelled turtle that had left the lake and was looking to lay its eggs in the pasture. Well, here we are on this beautiful piece of land with the landowner, Mr. Freddie Wood, here. And this is Busy Shires Byerly, and she's the executive director for the Conservation Trust for Florida. So how did you two meet? I mean, this is a piece of property you both have mutual interest in. How did it all start to happen? It is a, a very uh, beautiful piece of property, um, and it helps to further the mission of the Conservation Trust for Florida, which is to assist landowners like Freddie with protecting their, their farmland or their ranch land or their forest lands with um, either a conservation easement or assisting them with um, the Alachua County Forever program or some of the other land conservation programs. Um, it's in our project area, one of our, uh, it's, we call it the Evanston Orange Lake Preservation Project. Uh -huh. And the goal is to protect this very special place. And Freddie's property is one of the keystone parcels in this preservation project. For me, it would protect the, the property here from being developed forever. And that's kind of, like I've said before, we had the property for well over 100 years, and I'm the fourth generation. My sons will be the fifth, and they also express an interest in, in, in keeping it as is. And are you still allowed to work the farm as it's been working? As I understand it, the cattle can, the operation can go on exactly as it is going. And we can do some row cropping, not over the whole place, which I, I at my age and my sons are not, <laughs> not farmers, and, and there probably will not be any row cropping other than maybe a garden somewhere, which probably would be less than a half acre. So um, let's say uh, 40 years in the future right. and someone buys this property, do all the terms and conditions of the easement go to that new property owner? Yes. It is a perpetual easement, which means that it lasts forever and it runs with the land. So Freddie has the right to sell the property to someone mm -hmm. else. His sons have the right to sell the property to someone else, but the easement runs with the land. It will always be there. Different pieces of property are attractive to different types of land trusts. Some land trust organizations may primarily be interested in preserving working farms or forests. Others may want to preserve natural habitat to benefit wildlife and plant communities. Even open space for public recreation can be within a land grant's mission. A combination of factors make a parcel of land attractive to a land trust. On Freddie Woods' property, the Conservation Trust for Florida liked the combination of a working farm and natural areas. To achieve federal tax savings, the land must be qualified as a conservation easement under Uncle Sam's guidelines. First, the easement must restrict the use of the land in perpetuity, in other words, forever. Second, the easement must be made with a qualified land trust organization. Third, the easement must serve one or more of the following. A. Preservation of open space, including farmland or forest land. B. Protection of natural habitat. And C preservation of land for public outdoor recreation or education. All easements are an agreement between the landowner and a land trust, but the landowner still owns the land. We talked a bit more with Freddie and Busy about their easement. 
um, Freddie can still own his land, but the conservation easement will help protect the public's interests. And in exchange for selling the right to subdivide his property and develop it, he receives um, compensation for that. The amount has not been determined, but that's based on an, a fair market appraisal of his property. The amount that Mr. Wood receives is based on fair market value of the land if it were sold for development. The difference between this price and the price of the land with the easement is the amount paid to Mr. Wood. However, Mr. Wood thinks that his land could be worth more in the near future, even with the easement on it. It's gone over in my mind that uh, if we do this and sell the development rights, that 20, 30 years down the road, there's going to be very few of these larger tracts, say 100 acres or better, left in the country. And I think some wealthy individual or some movie star or something that wants a larger tract of land is going to pay as much or more than the developers would pay for that to have a piece that he could call his own and get out in the middle of and not see anybody but the wildlife and maybe the cattle if he had cattle and that kind of thing. Conservation easements could potentially preserve rural landscapes. These easements are quite flexible. The terms and conditions vary depending on what the landowner wants. Some of the more important points to remember are 1. Conservation easements restrict the amount of development on the property. 2. In return for giving up development rights, farmers receive monetary compensation in terms of income, estate, and sometimes property tax reduction. Also, landowners can sell development rights for cash. 3. A conservation easement is an agreement between a land trust organization and the property owner. 4. With an easement, landowners can still work the land and own it, which gives them the right to sell the property in the future. The terms and conditions of the easement stay with the land. To learn more about easements and other sustainable topics, please visit the Living Green website. That's it for this episode of Living Green. If you're a landowner and interested in conservation easements, contact your local land trust organization and find out more.